Okay, I don't know. I'm like 50-50 on it. But I'm kind of interested in it. It's uh, this Dan Schneider interview with The Hollywood Reporter. Hey, it's Boogie. I played T-Ball and Nickelodeon's iCarly. Boogie? I got a chance to watch The Quiet on... Oh, it... I remember this guy from iCarly. Hey, it's Boogie. I played T-Ball and Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program, and I reached out to Dan to see if it was Black something guy. that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the, what we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we've got a lot of things to unpack. Yo, Dan um, Schneider's lost some before fucking I dive weight. Into my list of topics that I'd like to discuss. Is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Yeah? For what? For what, then? <laughs> Joji music is not great. Billy Frank mocks Joji. Joji sad boy shit is fucking gay. Dan, what do you owe people a what well, can you be more specific than that, please? Do you think you could explain what did you what you did? <laughs> what what exact actions you took, please, Dan? Let's talk about the massages. Okay. Watching the content yesterday. Yeah, let's talk about the massages, Dan. <laughs> the massages? The massages that you had on set with, on the children's shows? On your feet? Yesterday, that was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong. That <laughs> what is how this is so bizarre? This is so bizarre. Yeah, it happened. This is so bizarre. Are we just, are we just accepting this happened? Okay. Watching the content yesterday, that was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I've changed, guys. This is insane. This is insane. What's going on? This is like worse than Prince Andrew. At least he denied it. Yeah, I admit it, I did it. <laughs> do you want to come to America? <laughs> Then I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And even additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or wherever they happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. <laughs> Dude! What is going on? I didn't realize how insane this was going to be, I'll be honest. I think we're right, I'm saying this is gonna be. All right, so I guess just for context, what's this tweet that's been going around? There's some tweet that's been popping off about this. Okay. Dan Schneider is sick for this, bruh. Okay, what well, what's going what's this about? Say three sentences that I bet not one person has ever Oh, I've seen this before. I've seen this before. Said before in the history of mankind. Sentence number one. Oh man, my uvula got stuck between that hamster's toes. See? Okay. Alright. Alright, good start, good start, good start. That could never happen, because your uvula is that swingy thing in the back of your throat right here. Yeah, I, okay. Okay. This shouldn't part, this shouldn't get content ID'd, because Quentin Reviews has so much iCarly stuff in his videos. I should be able to, as long as I talk over it enough and also i don't think that's actually that's not actually from the show that's from the slap which was a web series which i don't think will be content id i don't think we'll see we'll see 
So there's I'm no way you can get stuck right between now. a hamster's toes. Sentence number three. <laughs> I'm soaking wet. I'm actually, actually no, no, we'll pass. We'll get so I owe them. So, so yeah, Dan Schneider's sick for this. We, we get the idea. We get the idea. <laughs> Why do you know so much about this? Bug, I was, I was like, what, what, how, when did iCarly air? First of all, I watched every, all the Quentin Reviews videos about it. I'll be honest. I have. I have. When did iCarly air? How old was I? Okay, it wasn't 2021, was it? 2000, I was eight years old when this show came out. Okay, look, I, I know iCarly. I grew up around this stuff, okay? Nick Mullen used to talk about all this stuff. I think I have heard Nick Mullen talk a lot about Dan Schneider, yeah. Yeah. So I am, so I'm aware of what this is, okay? What, 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 what all this stuff is. What do you mean by I sure grew up around this stuff? What are you, what are you implying there? What's the implication of this method, ulcerous spiv? Uh, Spudgun, aren't you like 35? Are you like 35? Come on now. Come on now. Of course you didn't grow up watching iCarly. You were 18 when it aired. Um, an apology as well. Yeah. Dan, talk to me about the writer's room. From what I saw... 31. Oh. Cool. No. Sorry, no. huge and difference. I'll, huge I'll distinction. I'm going to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room. You're lying if you say Fred going on iCarly wasn't monumental. Oh shit, he's spitting there. Bruh, sorry, Nickelodeon groomed you, bruh. Okay. Drum ever. Period. Right, let's go back for a second. No, no, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say. No writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room, ever, period, the end, no excuses. Um, most. I'm sorry for making the other writers uncomfortable by bringing the child actors into my office to give me a foot massage. I'm sorry I made everyone else so uncomfortable. TV writers, comedy writers have been in writer's rooms and they are aware that a lot of times there are inappropriate jokes made and inappropriate topics come up. Uh, Don't smile, Dean. Super chatted two dollars, two dollars from Don't Smile, Dean. Bra, sorry, Nickelodeon groomed you, bra. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In that, especially when I was leading the room, um, it embarrasses me. I shouldn't have done it. Um, and, and, and I can tell you why it hurts really bad for me. Um, I'm losing it here. This is fucking wild. It, it, it hurts really bad for me. It hurts really bad. <laughs> This is very, it's a very painful time for me. Dog, you're like a, you're like a child, you're like a, ch a predator, you're like a freak. I don't want to be too specific with my claims here because I can't substantiate them, but you're like a freak. You're like a, 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 a lunatic, a pervert, a, a very strange individual. He's writing blog posts about like, <laughs> like a Jewish, <laughs> stop, stop. I remember very clearly my early experiences, my first experiences in the entertainment I'm business. I'm joking. That's comedy. I was green. That's all comedy. I was scared. That's I was excited. It, it meant the world to me that I was getting those opportunities. And I went in and I got lucky. Cause and knowing the base way, like he wants to marry a teenage guy. <laughs> they were great. My first couple of experiences were fantastic. And the fact that the, and the fact that I didn't pay that forward to every employee that walked through my door, yeah. it, it, it hurts my heart because I should have. And I wish I could go back and fix that. Um, in the writer's room, there's no doubt that sometimes those jokes went beyond the pale and I said so I have to that... I just have to stop quoting Quentes. It's got to stop. I need to stop I come so close to saying stuff that just it needs to not be said on stream <clears throat> He's really funny, but he's also Turbo band turbo like 
uh, locked down by everything, by the feds. Hmm. And it also says things that probably make you look bad. So if you quote them, you, okay, listen, no echo quotes, no echo quotes, okay? None of that. No, no, no. No, no, no. We understand. We understand where the name Schneider comes from. We get it. We get it. No, no, no. Jesus. We'll get through this video, okay? Went too far or made practical jokes that went too far. And um, that was wrong. And that, that was because, you know, I was an inexperienced producer. I was immature. Wouldn't happen today. But um, I'm just really sorry it happened. Yeah. Now, we know you've had a lot of success over two decades. Thousands of people have worked with you for you. Okay. Let's speak directly to the people who did not have a good experience with you. Okay, I would like to speak to those people because I hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time. You know me, you've been on my sets. Um, look, I've had some employees. Dude, uh, like it's crazy to put your fucking credibility by fucking Dan Schneider. So and go, yeah, I was on set with Dan. You're really sorry, aren't you, Dan? Imagine doing that, bro. If, you, if you're like not 100% certain this guy never molested a kid, that have worked for me for 10 years, some more than 20 years, who would work with me again, but um, not everybody. There's a, still a significant number that didn't have a great time working for me, so my batting average isn't nearly high enough in that area. Um, and the way they wouldn't get the best of me is that I would let the pressure of doing 40 or even more episodes per year, I would let that pressure get to me, which a good boss should never, ever do. Was there specific things that you were doing? Sh sure. I would um, snap at people sometimes. Mm -hmm. I would be... Yeah, j just snap. Okay. Snarky when I could have given them a nicer answer. Um, I would not give people the time that they needed. I would be in too big a hurry to get on to the next thing I had to do. And watching that show, it made me... There were so many times I wanted to pick up a phone and call some of those people and say, I'm so sorry and let's talk about it. And... I, I wish you'd had a better time, and I wish I could have shown you a better experience. Yeah. Now, so what what happened to the massages? What, we were talking about that a minute ago. I think that's what everyone's interested in, Schneider. You've written hundreds of episodes. Dan, thousands Daniel. Thousands of jokes have been told. Yeah. But currently, where we are... Uh -huh. Oh, snippy. <laughs> snippy, snarky, impatient. What's the big deal, guys? He's just kind of like a bad boss when you think about it. He's kind of like a shitty boss. He's just kind of like, you know, have you ever had like a boss who's just not very nice? You guys ever had that? A boss who's just not very... That's kind of like what Dan Schneider was like. Just that boss who you just don't get along with. That's kind of like what Dan Schneider was like. He's just one of those bosses that you just don't get along with. <laughs> Nothing to see here, guys. All right, let's hear about the jokes. Let's hear about the jokes in the show. I'm sure I'll have a great explanation for some of these. All the, uh, the toenail painting and the, the, thing, the, the toe wagging. And the foot rubbing. <clears throat> some people think that some of those jokes are inappropriate for children. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? All these jokes that you're speaking of, um, that the show covered over the past two nights, every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny mm -hmm. and only funny. So there's no way you could get it stuck between a hamster's toes. Sentence number three. Ah! I'm soaking wet! Quick, somebody bring me the ocean! No one would ever say that. Why? Because if you were soaking wet and you were upset about it, the last thing you'd want is for somebody to bring you the ocean. Because the ocean is even more wet than even the wettest person in the world. Have you ever tried? Oh, wait, wrong one. Funny. Okay. Um, now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens and they're looking at them and they're saying, oh, you know, I don't think that's appropriate for, for a kid's show. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with that. If, if that's how anyone feels, let's cut those jokes out of the show. Just like I would have done 20 years ago. Has this got the toes one? No, it doesn't. Where's the toes one? I swear there's like a clip of her fucking with her feet 
or some shit. Or is that from iCarly? There's one where they're like full blown, like it's like full blown foot fetish shit. Foot in mouth, is that the one? Is that what I'm thinking of? Dude, I've known about all this Dan Schneider shit for years. This has been like, I mean, anyone who was on 4chan in like the, the mid 2010s saw all like the Dan Schneider shit, I feel like. No? I can't I can't see it. I can't immediately see it. <clears throat> oh well. Listen, there's so much weird shit in that show. It's a lot to do with feet. It's a lot of foot stuff. Ago or 25 years ago. I cut it. I want my shows to be popular. I want everyone to like the more people who like the shows, the happier I am. Yeah. So if there's anything in a show that needs to be cut because it's upsetting somebody, let's cut it. So I think it's big for you to say with your work, mm -hmm. if it's viewed as that today, you don't have a problem. Cut it. Cut it. I mean, that's a solution. The, the last thing I want to ever do yeah. is put any content in a show that's going to upset my audience and make them want to turn off the TV. Why would I ever want to do that? That makes sense. I want to give you an opportunity to kind of elaborate on something. Okay. The thought process from the series is you had the power to just write a joke and no matter what, it's going on. Thank you for the membership. You just had that type of power. Is that true? Oh, are these refreshings? Oh my God. Should I... Where's my... Are these going to fuck up super hard because of stream elements being an absolute dog shit service i'm gonna have to mute these right thank you guys thank you thank you the the notion that i had the power to just produce whatever i wanted and have it air is completely false okay there were many many levels of scrutiny okay we had executives in la we had executives in new york so two coasts two coasts okay of, of, of approval coasts. yes and not and by the way approval Babe. at every stage really okay. and i'm talking about wardrobe i'm talking it's about like makeup, freaky friday sound sets dialogue jokes everything now when you say approval these obviously that's a hierarchy not your no, colleagues right. or people in the room okay no no not my colleagues no these are my bosses bosses and then their bosses and then their bosses and they're approving all of this stuff okay okay and we're also shooting it in front of all sorts of adults I and call caregivers it foot stuff and the in the farms. Team. The music is so obtuse, dude. Oh my god. Dude, okay, yeah, we got the idea. We got the sure. fucking idea. And and the families, everybody's watching it. And if anybody had said anything, hey, we don't like that. That's not appropriate. You then it would have been cut out. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna push back a little bit sure. because the series mm -hmm. painted you in this way that you were just the guy that was doing what he wanted and mm -hmm. people were afraid to confront you about things. So say, just humor me, say that that was the case. What would have been the ultimate way to... Okay, if nobody on the set, if all of the dozens and dozens of adults that were on the set, if they didn't say anything, if... Did this guy rape? Uh, so he's admitted to massages? And for making and, and making people uncomfortable on set through being snappy, snarky, impatient, and playing practical jokes. That's what he's confessed to so far. <laughs> so massages is very strange for a, a a kids TV producer, I would I would say. That's not it's not great. If my bosses said if they insisted you've got to make a change here, you gotta cut that. I had to do it. I had no choice. Got it. Now this next one, it kind of hit close to home. Mm -hmm. uh, being a new father, I wouldn't be opposed of, to my child being in the entertainment industry. It doesn't matter what age, yeah? Seeing some of those on-air dares, seeing it now from where you are now in your life, what do you think of that? I think that some of the on-air dares went too far. I think they pushed the envelope too far. Not all of them, not most of them, but some did. Nickelodeon wanted to do their version of Fear Factor. At the time we were shooting all that, so I was tasked with doing these on-air dares with the all that cast. 
So we get with the writers and we come up with all these ideas and it's hard to do because we don't have the budget of fear factor sure. and we can't put the kids in dangerous situations like the adults are put in. So kids. it was hard. What, what dares are we talking about here? What, what dares happened on this show? Yeah, what, what, what are we talking about here? What were the dares? Could you elaborate, please, Daniel? I'd be really interested. Yeah, hard to come up with stuff, but we would come up with all these ideas of dares they could do. We would uh, uh, give them to the network, and they would say, "One, tell us the ones that were okay. Right. Those are the ones we shot. Those are the ones that aired. At the time, I had no indication that any kid ever had a problem with them. But when I was watching the show over the past two <laughs> it's. I feel like there's a lot of things that aren't for the kid to have a problem with. No? I, don't, I just don't think that's their response. It's not on the it's not the responsibility of the child to speak out and say they have an issue with it, is it? What were these dares? What are we talking about here? Two nights. I now know that there were kids who did have problems with the on-air dares. And it breaks my heart. And I'm so sorry. I am so sorry to any kid who ever had to do a dare or anything that they didn't want to do or weren't comfortable doing. We went out of our way to make sure they were safe and, and that everything was done properly. But if a kid was scared and didn't want to do it, kids shouldn't have had to do it. Yeah. Period. The end. Right. And if I had known at the time, I would, I would have changed it on the spot. Now, we also saw the series highlight two former writers viewers, two women, mm -hmm. who spoke about a wage discrepancy. Now, I know that you don't divvy out salaries. Talk to me about that part. Oh, uh, nobody well, cares correct. about I this, dude. Nothing to do with paying writers. I never <laughs> talk about have. the I've kids. Never made a writer's deal, and of all the talk writers the I've fate. been in the writers' room with, I never even knew how much most of them were getting paid. Yeah, but we saw these two women who were writers for you sharing one salary. How mm -hmm. does that happen? It's very simple. There's a common practice in television when hiring writers. If you have a spot for a new writer, sometimes. You'll go to two writers and say, hey, if you two new writers for your first job are willing to share a salary, you can both have the job. Mm. They have the opportunity to say, yes, that sounds good, or no, no thank you. In this case, it was two women writers. I've done another show where that teaming was done with two male writers, and they split a salary. I did another show where it was a male and a female writer, and they split a salary. So and these are all first-time writers? All first-time writers looking for their first gig. Got it. Now, in the series... They also highlighted two black actors who said that they felt overlooked. Now, I want to be clear. I'm never going to speak on anyone else's journey. <laughs> I can talk about my experience, how my experience was with you, what I saw prior to working with you. But again, I don't want to speak BLM. on anyone's journey. I saw you be honored for diversity in your work. Yes. And the reason for that is... Diversity has always been very important to me in my shows. If you go back to the very first Nickelodeon show I ever made, that's very evident, as it is in the second one, and then the first movie I ever made for Nickelodeon, which starred Keenan and Kel, and every show I did after that had a lead black actor in it. I'm very proud of that. That's it's very right. important to me. That's and right. And not only am I proud of that <laughs> they were in my shows, I'm <laughs> exceptionally proud of the achievements they've had beyond my shows. And they've gone on to bigger and better things. And that gives me a great sense of I'm so I'm awful, well, dude. Something that really honestly. kind of bothered me was it's how so they bad. I gotta stop. your relationship with the cast. Yeah, it bothered me too. Yeah, just me being there, I knew the dynamic was trust. I understood that in situations where they may have had turmoil, whether it be with their families. We're here to see the, uh, and this is Spud Gun's words, not mine, pedo lie through his teeth about the foot issue, not talk about black people. That's very true. That is what I'm looking for. This distraction, not appreciated. Not appreciated at all. Not a fan. Not a fan. Whether it be other castmates, they came to you <clears throat> versus how they made you look. With that said, Amanda Bynes was brought up in the series mm -hmm. and her emancipation and how you were involved in that. Can you talk to us about it a bit? Sure. Um, Amanda was between the ages of 16 and 17, and she wanted to get emancipated from her parents, mm -hmm. which was a fairly common thing with successful young actors, at least at the time. Sure. 
um, and she wanted that for herself. So she turned to her team, which included her lawyer, her agent, her manager, her publicist, me, because she included me as part of her team, thought of me that way. We supported her. She tried to get emancipated and it ended up not working out, and she didn't. Well, since we're here, let's stay here for a moment. There was also an incident where she had... So, wait, wait, wait. So that, I just got absolutely zero information from that. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel Hyman Dividerstein. <laughs> Stop posting pics of children's feet. That ish weird, bruh. Freddy Woods super chatted $5. $5 from Freddy Woods. Stop posting pics of children's feet. Ish weird, bruh. Dan Schneider. Stop getting foot massages from kids. That ish weird, bruh. IDF? How about IDFC? I don't freaking care. Oh, yes. Would. Um, can you talk to us a little bit just to clear the air of exactly what happened in that situation? Yes. Uh, one night, it was very late. Oh, well guess who's smosh in the chat? Scripted ass interview. It does feel a little bit like that. It does feel a little bit like that. After midnight, one or two in the morning, phone rang. I answered. It was Amanda. She was upset. She was in distress. She had had some conflict with her parents. I think her father. And she called me. I was immediately concerned about her safety. I called someone who I knew was fairly nearby. That person was able to go and pick her up. Then I knew she was safe. I felt better. She ended up being taken to the police. Well, Wait, regardless of what some people Amanda Bynes think. or what? what? Sorry, what was that? Phone rang. It was a little bit just to clear she had. Well, since we're here, let's stay here for a moment. There was also an incident where she had ran away from home. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, Amanda Bynes. Can you okay. talk to us a little bit just to clear the air of exactly what happened in that situation? Yes. Thank you for the membership. Uh, one order. night, <clears throat> it was very late, well after midnight, one or two in the morning, phone rang. I answered. It was Amanda. She was upset. She was in distress. She had had some conflict with her parents, I think her father, and she called me. I was immediately concerned about her safety. I called someone who I knew was fairly nearby. That person was able to go and pick her up. Then I knew she was safe. I felt better. She ended up being taken to the police. Well, regardless of what some people may think. I, I mean, listen, sure, Amanda Bynes might hate him and say uh, he traumatized her. I don't necessarily take that as evidence of, of much. Amanda Bynes is, is insane. Let's be real. Okay, I think there's other points we can indicate. Probably a little bit better than that. I don't really take... I don't really take that as, as too much. Dude, that Dan Schneider is sick for this bro tweet with the clip has 27,000 book quotes. Dude, people are... This is the best evidence of how correct Mr. Girl is. You put a whiff of kind of underage seeming. I, I don't actually know how old Ariana Grande is in that girls on twitter and twenty-seven thousand men are bookmarking it that's so gross <laughs> that's crazy no no stylo let's be real we can accept we can accept that uh, in the case of ariana grande it's almost certainly mostly men now there are definitely cases where there's some twinkish 17 year old boy that women say horrendous shit about uh that that is also true so it, it does happen with both but ariana grande <clears throat> it's gonna be men i just want everyone to remember awap yeah of course i mean this this is the problem though isn't it is there's no point calling a woman a pedophile because they all are like you just take it's just call them a woman right It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's tautological. Quentin reviews has 27,000 burner accounts. <laughs> I think it's only positive that you are there for people when they need you. That said, let's talk about some of the... That main kid from Stranger Things brings out all the female pedos. That's facts. That's facts. The things that have just been swirling forever. Okay. You were banned from your set. Never, never. Never happened. 
That is a false rumor. What happened? Add it to the list of false Talk rumors. Talk to me. What happened? They were adult actresses at the time, and they had their own specific reasons for not wanting to do the show anymore. Mm. I'm not judging that. It got tense, and what they don't know, maybe, is I did everything I could to make hey, that Hey, going a little bit far with that, with that last time, bit. We would call and Let's say... Let's take it easy. A, <laughs> not a good situation. Okay. So I, I decided I'm going to do what most showrunners do, which is, you're not on the set. There's a director there oh, to man. shoot it. I'll go up to the writer's room. I'll work on the next script. But yeah. because everybody was so used to me caring about every detail of every show so yeah. much, for me not to be on the set, yeah, maybe some people thought I got banned. So it was more of an assumption because this guy's usually here and now he's not. I don't know if it was an assumption. I don't know if somebody thought they were making me look bad by saying I got banned uh, from the set. I have no idea. Okay. All I know is I was never banned from the set. Yep. The darkest part of this series. I mean, there would probably be a paper trail or something for that, I imagine. So it'd be wild for him to deny it if, it was, if, if he wasn't correct about it. Discuss child <clears throat> predators. Now, I want to make sure that we okay. clear a couple of things okay. up. Okay. Yeah? Brian Peck was not hired by you. No, I did not hire Brian Peck. This was a Tolan Robbins production? Yeah. And when Drake and I talked and he told me what had happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. Brian Peck, didn't he play um, Josh's dad on Drake and Josh? I assume he's... Uh, he would be Josh Peck's dad, right? No? Right? I mean, he is Josh, yeah. He is Josh Peck's dad. Yeah, of course. I th do you not play? I thought he was an actor. Yeah, he molested Drake. Whatever his name is, what his surname is. Oh, no, he was a vocal coach, wasn't he? No, you're right. He was a vocal coach. They're not related. Despite their name. That's crazy that they were both working on the same show, same surname. Yeah, what are the odds? I feel like everyone must assume that when they hear the story. Like, uh, fucking Josh Peck must fucking hate that. Can you imagine if you work on a set with a guy who molests your co-star and everyone thinks it's your dad because you share a surname? Dude. <laughs> Small world, bet they just laugh about it now. <laughs> what is it with vocal slash rhetoric coaches and being sex pests? And gymnastics teachers. And gymnastics teachers, that's the other one too. They don't talk because Drake also turned out to be a bit of a freak himself. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, it almost makes me feel like, you know, not that it, it, not the Drake Peck, not Drake Peck, fuck me. Not that Drake Bell is innocent or resolved or anything, but you do sort of go, like, oh, well, you know, I get why he was dating high school girls when he was 35 now. <laughs> Wait, do I have that clip? I think I've got a fucking amazing clip. I, want, I hope it doesn't get claimed. I've got an amazing clip if, if it doesn't get claimed. Now you plead to count one, attempted endangering children, felony of the fourth degree. Guilty. How do you plead to count two, disseminating matter harmful to juveniles, first degree misdemeanor. Guilty. 
Let the record reflect the defendant has pled guilty. The court accepts that plea. Find it was made knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently. I thought that's far. And I told him, I'm here for you. What do you need? Which Drake mentioned in the show that we watched last night. And next, I heard that he went to court when this guy was being tried, Peck. And when Drake walked in, he saw 50 people sitting on the side of the courtroom supporting Peck. A lot of them pretty famous. Of course, Drake was devastated that that happened. And, and even more disappointing, 41 of those people wrote letters for Peck, character letters, praising him for who he was and asking for leniency. Jesus. And they knew that he was guilty. They knew he had confessed to some degree. Mm -hmm. And they still did this. It's just, that's baffling that adults would do that. Yeah. And... Dude, but hasn't he admitted to foot massages? I don't know if people know this, but Drake's mom, a lovely woman who I stay in contact with this day, she came to me at the time and she said, We'll run this back. Dan, end. I'm not good with words like you are. And would you help me with my speech for the judge? And I said, of course. And I did. And he ended up going to prison. Is that, so no way fine. he's ulting. Dude, it, what is he? What are those, dude? Bro. <laughs> Can I get eyes on this? Have we got eyes on this? What are those? Seriously, can we can we get eyes on this? Yeah, check on these kicks real quick. The autism shoes are on. Rocking up to gym class in these. Grade five gym class, Dan Schneider. New sneakers from his bar mitzvah. Dude, this guy. And yeah, that was probably the darkest part of my career. And here's the kicker that I really don't get. After he got out of prison and was, to my knowledge, a registered sex offender, he was hired on a Disney Channel show. I, I, don't, I don't understand. Oh, Matt. so now, oh, yes, now the Nickelodeon guy gets to take snipes at Disney. All oh, right, I see how it is, Dan. Okay. Um, always a bit, always in business mode, aren't you? Always, never, always thinking about the money, aren't uh, you, Dan? Yeah. I appreciate you sharing it, man. Are you okay? You want to take a minute? Yeah, I'm all right. Let's, let's keep going. Yeah? Yeah. No, okay. I'm fine. I think we really unpacked some important things. We set the record straight on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Before I let you get out of here, I appreciate the vulnerability that you use in knowing that there's definitely things that you would have and should have done differently. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we haven't discussed? Anything that if you could go back and navigate the journey differently, what would that look like? Um, yeah, there's definitely things that I would do differently. Um, one that I think would be really, really important is when you're hiring young actors, minors, to work in television, I would suggest that we have a licensed therapist there to oversee that process. Okay, that's reasonable. Look, to be fair, I will say, we don't know. I'll, I'll be, t look, let's be totally fair here. We don't know this guy's a child molester. We don't know this guy's a pedophile. I don't even think there's been a single person accuse him of that. It just seems, to, it does seem to have been foot massages, which is fucked up, but it, he didn't, like rape a kid like you know it's a it's not quite the same is it it's not quite the same so let's be fair okay this guy can if there's never any evidence that comes out and he's just giving these suggestions i think this is totally fine 
He can he can apologize. He should probably like I don't know fucking pay some settlement to whoever he made giving foot massages. Jeanette McCurdy probably. Um, why do my phone just buzz? Really, just a J J stalk going? Okay. Yeah, so I think it's fine for him to give suggestions. I think you know if he's using this to to say push for change, like okay, cool. Try not to uh, try to make sure that. No other child child actors have to fucking go through what this shit. I guess <clears throat> you didn't get penetrated. So you're fine. I don't think anyone said that hype them. I might start timing you out when these topics come up. I might start having to do it for the specific reason of making sure that those kids really wanted to do this job. That yeah. they really wanted to be on television. Yeah. Maybe they should even be informed about what that means. What's it gonna mean if you're famous? What's that gonna mean on social media? What's it gonna mean within your family? Right. Let them find out. And then that way, if a kid doesn't wanna be on a TV show, they can opt out. Yeah. That, that psychologist, that therapist could come to us and say, this kid is, is, doesn't wanna do it, or their parents aren't, aren't uh, understanding of what's gonna come. And then we could avoid the mistake of ever putting a kid in a TV show that didn't wanna be there. Um, and additionally, the main thing that I would change is... Okay, you might have been joking that time, but you're not joking every other time, so... ...is how I treat people and everyone. I, I definitely at times... If you do the same thing 60 times and you're not joking, you can't expect me to think, oh, you're joking on the 61st. That's that's not how that works. didn't give people the best of me. I, I didn't show enough patience. I could be cocky and definitely overambitious and sometimes just straight up rude and obnoxious, and I am so sorry that I ever was. And um, all right. when I watched the show, I could see the hurt in some people's eyes, and it made me feel awful and regretful and sorry. Um, Days. <laughs> I wish I could go back, you know, especially to those earlier years of my career and bring the growth and the experience that I have now and just do a better job and never ever feel like it was okay to be an asshole to anyone ever. Um, look, I, I wanted to make funny TV shows for kids and we definitely did. Okay, this has got to be a joke. I'm not even addressing that, Noah. Did that. But that's gotta be trolling. Go you've gotta be trolling I there's no get way it done in different ways there's not there's no one that stupid in my I'd chat just be nicer <clears throat> as often you guys as are better than that i believe and listen more to the people on my team and um i would do everything that i could to make sure that everyone had a good experience uh that's what i do differently dan i appreciate your time i appreciate you thanks for stopping by man Nice try, Noah. Nice try. Nice try, Noah. You tried. You're trying too hard, though. I didn't bite on the first time, so you got to kind of give it up. Let's uh, let's run this back. What do you say at the start about the massages? I played T-Ball on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program, and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the, what we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we've got a lot of things to unpack. Um, but before I dive into my list of topics that I'd like to discuss, is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. To me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Let's talk about the massages. Okay. Watching the content yesterday, that was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed. Yeah, so it was. It was massages from young actresses. Young actresses. So that's going to be kids. It was getting massages from kids. Behind the scenes, apparently. <clears throat> so. 
there should probably be a proper investigation here, really, shouldn't there? <clears throat> I don't know what's been done. But if there's not already been, like, full police involvement, like, feds, there should be. Like... <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know Jeanette McCurdy's allegedly stuff, said stuff about Ben Schneider, but none of it's, like, confirmed, so it's just difficult. Because, like, I mean, it may well be, it, I, I assume <laughs> there's probably something illegal about uh, getting foot massages from child actors you employ anyway. Uh, but the, the reality is that if someone's getting behind-the-scenes massages from kids, it's like, well, what else could you be doing behind the scenes? <laughs> what else is happening? What else is going on in those in those offices? I like, come on now. It's very suspect. Thank you for the membership, Xenotypal. The creator was specifically a person who she worked under on Nickelodeon who asked her to massage him and emotionally abused her. Well, yeah, that'll be Dan Schneider then. If we're to go by this quiet on set stuff. Okay, well, uh, that Dan Schneider's, that was actually pretty entertaining. That was more than I expected it to be. That was bigger than I thought it'd be. That was pretty good. I enjoyed that. I didn't think it'd be that fun. Uh, we do have more, so oh, go over the replies as well. It's difficult on here. It's difficult on here. One minute, let me um, copy it into my other browser. Let's, uh... I mean, there's not a whole lot being said here. <clears throat> it's ironic having an iCarly character interview Dan Schneider after Jeanette McCurdy wrote about the abuse she went through with Dan on the set of iCarly. This is so weird. This was not an interview. This sounds like a friend asking his friend questions. The Hollywood Report should be ashamed. Why wasn't his weird foot fetish that infused into all of his work discussed? Well, it was, but not directly. They spoke about inappropriate jokes in the show that he would happily cut. This is disgusting because it shows that Hollywood protects their own or their club. Even before the doc hit, Dan's reputation as a creep is already a known fact for those who are in the industry. I don't know if that's true. It's, it's something that's it's a rumor outside of the industry. I don't know if it's state on the inside of the industry. I don't think that person does either. Um, anything else here? Go to hell. Yeah, I mean, it's just people saying they want to kill him, basically. Okay. Cool. Twitter moment. Twitter moment. Love it. Big fan. 
Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so that that was better than I expected to be. But I was sort of I, I sort of pulled that up because I wanted to chill for like twenty minutes before getting into the Xena and Poppy stuff. Because that's like a document I've got to read. And then this turned out to not be very chill content. It turned out to be very exciting content. <laughs> 